All right, guys. Thank you for watching Flip Class Flipcast. This is the first episode live. Uh, right now, we got George Hor J George J Horvath. Uh, you have been writing for a blog called Land of a uh, Land of a uh, Land of Obscusion. Yes. Uh, for 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 a while, right? It's it's been like the next month. It'll be the ninth anniversary. So next year it'll be ten. Oh wow, wow. So, so a really long, well, not a really long time, but you've been, what I like about you is that you are very knowledgeable. Uh, you tend to like, when I see you on Twitter and I see you talk to people, you're just stating facts all the time. Um, you are a, like, I think you're just like a really smart dude. Uh, so how, so again, like I told you off air, um, how did you get into anime? So... I have like two halves of it. There's like pre full on anime fan and then actual anime fan. I got into being like a regular anime fan later than most people, even my age, would be. So for me, like I remember I was born in 86, so I'm 33 yeah. right now. But I remember growing up, I saw uh, reruns of old Transformers G1. I saw some old uh, Lion Force Voltron. And you know, at the time, they were just normal, you know, cartoons. There's regular shells. You know, I enjoyed them. They're fun. They're great anime age series. And they're st they still hold up as well as they can today. And I think the first time I ever noticed something was different than the usual Western animations I would see was one day from a garage sale, I got this VHS tape. Uh, it was an animated VHS tape relating to um, an American series from the 80s called Captain Power and the Soldiers of the Future which I never saw the show, but I saw it and I'm like, oh, okay, this kind of looks cool. And I pop it in and it's an animated, like, it's supposed to be like you can play with it with the toy guns where it would like, red flashes would be on screen and you could shoot the enemies down. It was interesting. And the, the show itself actually I found out later was essentially like the first Western tokusatsu show. Oh, wow. Yeah, and you can actually buy it on DVD, it's on Amazon. But um, yeah, so these are all animated and I'm looking at it and I'm like, and I only had this first tape and it's like, this looks so different. And I, at the time, I was just like, this is really cool. And I would watch it over and over again. And then after that, it was like nothing. Then, um, you know, late 90s, you got Pokemon coming on. I'm watching that. I'm a big fan of that at the time. And then Digimon comes on in 99, 2000. And I'm even more of a fan. And I, I think love, by I that point, Digimon. Exactly. I think at that point, I might have heard the term anime, but I didn't really think of it. And it wasn't until, like, I started watching Digimon that they actually kind of started advertising it and other shows it was airing along as anime so i would think around early 2000 with like digimon and unfortunately the uh the, the failed attempt to air escaflone on fox kids did you know about that they whoa they aired escaflone on fox kids they tried they tried so pretty much oh. escaflone is a show with very shoujo elements for for girls so what they tried to do was, oh, well, technically Vaughn is the main character, isn't he? So we're just going to try to focus on making Vaughn the main character, make it for men, make it for boys. And they changed the music. So the music wasn't terrible, but it was completely different than what the original music was. And I think it only got like 10 episodes here in North America before they just dropped it. It actually fully aired in this edited form on YTV in Canada, though. Wow. I think you could get it on YouTube. I think people have ripped it on YouTube. But I remember seeing that, seeing that I was like, this show looks awesome. Because it does look awesome. That's and, yeah, it really and, looks amazing. In, in form, I could tell he told me was the main character, but it still was just like, oh my God, this is such a cool show. And only got like 10 episodes in. I'm like, ah, oh, come on. And uh, so I kept watching like the, the Saturday morning cartoons and eventually got stuff like uh, Ultimate Muscle, which I believe was around 2002, 2003, they put that on there. And around that same time, that's when I, I that's when I actually started hearing about Toonami. Uh, okay. Toonami had been around since the late 90s, but I didn't hear about it until I was in high school, until 2002. Okay. And so when I heard about it, I checked it out after school, and I see stuff like Roroni Kenshin and G Gun, and I'm like, these are amazing. And this is Tsunami is when they actually are advertising it as, you know, this is animation from Japan. This is anime. It's something special, something different than what we get. And that's where I was like, okay, I still wasn't full on anime fan, but I was watching Tsunami every day after school. And around, and in my senior year, uh, 2003, 2004, I had a broadcasting class for high school. And one of my classmates one day brought in this book, and it was a book about Gundam because he was a big Gundam fan. I didn't know, I didn't, I never knew this guy, you know, at the time until I met him in this class. 
And usually I'm kind of a shy guy. Like even doing this interview is kind of different for me. But uh, so one day I just, I'm like sitting next to him and I'm just like, I gotta, I gotta say something like it's Gundam. So I'm like, oh, you like Gundam? He's like, yeah. I'm like, oh, I love G Gundam. He's like, I love G Gundam. And you know, long story short, he's one of my best friends. And, like we're still friends That's this awesome. very day. I just, just saw him a couple days ago. So. And you guys bonded over G Gundam. G Gundam uh, definitely, and and he was also at that point he was already he had already gotten into like fan subs from another friend who I'm I'm now friends with as well, and so he was already fan in the you know so he was already watching stuff like Great Teacher Onizuka, uh, Rave Master, like anything that was on fan subs at the day, the old digital fan subs, and eventually the the funny thing so I, another thing I actually should remember before 2002 uh, in the early 90s. I'm one of those rare people that actually got into JoJo long before the anime. <laughs> because, did you uh, did you read the fans or not fans? But did you read like the manga as it was being translated? I read. Well, okay. So let me tell you this really quickly for JoJo. My first experience with JoJo was through the old Capcom 2D fighting games. Okay. That were the late '90s. So I remember reading Game Pro and I saw this advertisement for JoJo's Adventure in the arcade. I'm like, this looks cool. Never came across in the arcade. I, I would only make a couple of hundred, I bet, in, in America. So then I heard it was coming out on consoles. I'm like, I gotta get the Dreamcast version. I got the Dreamcast version. It's awesome. I loved it. I still love it to this day. I have the HD versions that's uh, not available anymore, but it's on 360 and PS3 it was. <laughs> Excuse me. And so then I was like, once I started getting into anime really regularly, which was around, around 2004, ironically, it was like, I started getting into it because my friend would be like, oh, this show Full Metal Alchemist is really cool. And then all of a sudden I hear, oh, this company's going to bring it over. Oh, I better start watching the fan subs because I'm an idiot. <laughs> so, so Full Metal Alchemist was the first show I watched uh, properly fans. Well, maybe not fan. Well, fan subbed, yes. Uh, in Japanese, I actually had already been buying a couple of anime DVDs as they came out. So I was weird. I was like, let me watch the fan subs, but I was still going to buy the DVDs for other stuff. So do you, so do you speak Japanese? I... <laughs> I took one semester of it in college, my second year, one semester, and anything else I've learned uh, is pretty much self-taught. You know, anime. Uh, I look online. There's a there's a great site if you want to be able to translate kanji or romanji. It's called jisho.org. J i s h o dot org. You can even let you can even recreate the kanji in the various um, like diacriticals that they're created from, so you can figure out what exactly something is meant to oh, be read. Awesome. Or it's a great site to check out, and that's definitely helped me uh, more recently in the years. So, but no, I mean, if I was to try to go to Japan, I might be able to be like, you know, "Donde esca es biblioteca" in Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> so how? So so you so you get in the anime. When did you go? I want to start writing about stuff, but you have a focus on obs like just obscure, just mm -hmm. like kind of like left field anime. Uh, yeah. When did you go? Uh, I'm gonna start writing about this. Okay, so um, when I started really getting into anime in 2004, and I started looking around at different sites, and there were some sites, and they some had some had forums. One of which is the now defunct, long defunct animeondvd.com forums. They were actually pretty. I didn't know at the time, but I quickly learned that it actually was a legend. Uh, a lot of those stuff that we out of anime DVDs and Blu-rays today, in, in term, especially in terms of like quality and production value, that is because a lot of studios like ADV Films went to those forums on anime DVD and the fans would tell them, hey, we want this kind of thing. We want this quality. We want this audio. We want to make sure this is the best. And they listen to them. Uh, of course, at the same time, this resulted in some of them being a little too high and mighty on themselves, which was a problem with that forum. But it was uh, definitely a place where I got to you know, interact with some fans. And eventually, Chris Beveridge, who now runs the Phantom Post, he originally moved Anime on DVD to mania.com. And at that point, when they did that, there was a small blog section in those new forums. So I did a little bit of writing at that point. And this was mainly because after I graduated high school in 04, I went to Rutgers for a journalism and media studies degree. That's what um, I was about to ask I actually you wrote about it earlier. I, I was gonna ask you, do you have a like do you actually have like a background in writing? Because your writing is really good. And thank you. And, it's, and it shows now because so, you know, now that you say that. Well, okay. I, I wrote about this on the blog because it actually happened 15 years ago this year. Back in February, uh, around 2004 or so, I was really into the GameStop, a GameSpot, I should say, GameSpot website. 
And that's when they had uh, a lot of people who are now a giant bomb, like Jeff Gersman. Yeah, Alex Jeff Navarro. Gersman, love, oh yeah, I love those guys. So they were all, I love them when they were on GameSpot. And they had this little section called Game Spotting, which was like essentially like a little blog where they could talk about wherever the hell they wanted. And sometimes they would allow, um, on, pretty much they would solicit people to be like, hey, fans, send in you know an article. And if you like it, we'll publish it. So I decided, okay, I'm just going to do some still, st- you know, thing about the 32x, and who's going to write about the 32x in 2004? Because I have, a- <laughs> I like, I like, you know, it's it's a flawed concept. It, it bombed, but it, there were some solid titles on there. I think nowadays it's getting a little more respect. So I write it. This was literally like a one and done thing. I did like, like maybe an hour or two, and I was like, okay, get some screenshots, email it, and then like within a week. Um, either Jeff Gersman or you know, Ryan McDonald, someone from GameSpot sends me back going, hey, can you re- reset the article? I'm just like, I got myself into it. You're like, holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. I, 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 I already had wanted to be going to journalism. It's just that moment in particular just made me think like, okay, if they find something in this 17-year-old who has like no talent whatsoever, then maybe I, maybe there's a chance for me. But uh, yeah, so I do college. I did five years at Rutgers, got my degree. And during that time, there was the Amania.com, uh, Anime and AODVB forums, I believe they're called. And I did the little blog there. And I was like, ah, it's, you know, just simple stuff, nothing special. And around that same time, while I was in college, so this moves into, so here's the weird thing about me. Another thing I wrote about this year, just last month, because it was a 10 year anniversary on that. So around the same time, YouTube started coming in. Yep. Like, here's the funny thing about me. I think literally my first day of college in, like, September 2004, I was told in a class about this brand new website called Facebook where you, students would talk about their teachers. You know, it's just for students. Yeah, it did start off just as students because I yeah. remember being in uh, – because you're a little bit older than me. I was thinking I was, like, a freshman when Facebook came out. And uh, I remember uh, wanting to sign up, but you had to have a college – you, you, you had a dot. You, you had to have a dot edu email. Oh no! Did we lose him, George? Oh no! I think we lost him, guys. Can ever, can anyone else hear me in the comments? Oh no! I'm gonna get on Twitter and see if he is, if his internet dropped. I don't know. It says we're still live, so I'm gonna assume. Um, yep, looks like his internet. Oh well, thank you, base. That was very kind of you. Um, yeah. Oh, hey, Justin. Uh, I I think he just dropped. Um, yeah, I think George uh, George just dropped. I messaged him on Twitter. Hopefully, he gets sees it. Um, oh, there we are. Okay, you're back. Oh, I think there. You're back. We have uh, <laughs> we have uh, Justin Savakis is in the comments watching live now too. So what's on? What's going on, Justin? <laughs> so you hear about YouTube and Facebook? So. Um... Obviously, by then, you're getting stuff like James Rolfe, the Angry Video Game Nerd, and then also you got other channels like Classic Game Room and Happy Console Gamer. Yeah. And there maybe you think, like, you know, this, this is cool. Maybe I should try doing videos. So after I finished college and, uh, you know, not doing much, I have a part-time job, not much else to do. I start, I take an old family camera and I just put it at, point it at the TV and I start making these crappy-ass videos. And I'm just talking about games and occasionally anime. And I did that for about a year before I was just like, you know, let me actually do this idea that I had, which was to create like a written blog. I thought, like, let me try to do this finally. And so that's how the line of execution came about. It was really just, it was something I had in my mind. And after I got tired of doing videos, I was just like, let me do that. I mean, we're kind of, I'm, I'm in a very similar boat right now. Um, Cause I've been doing videos for almost a year, but I don't think I can get my what I really want to say out in like a 10 minute video for certain manga and anime series. So I'm starting a website next year, uh, pretty, okay. much doing, pretty much doing exactly what like you're doing, because I am kind of tired of just 
having my phone in front of my face talking about a <laughs> manga series or an or an anime series. But uh, you well, have back when, I was doing, back when I was doing that, you were enforced to ten minutes, and then by the oh, time yeah. I yeah yeah, and then when I stopped doing the videos in um at the beginning of 2011 because I did one like oh I'm I'm not dead I'll be back and I hated doing that because now I regret it. But at that point, that was right when they stopped doing the restriction. Wow, I've I I, com I completely forgot it was it was ten minutes and then they raised it to fifteen. To 15. And, and then eventually they just got rid of it. They were like, whatever. Wow. Uh, so you so going through your website here, you have a thing called the master list where you have uh, reviewed. I want to say it looks like at least a hundred things. Do you have a Do you uh, have an exact? Number so the way I do my numbering is if it's just a review and it's anime, manga, or video game or movie at live action adaptation of an anime or manga, those count in the overall numbers. And uh, for that, I am nearing 250. Holy crap! Wow, and every 50th has been I do as a milestone, and it's always been something crappy, always something crappy, yeah. So, number 50 is the infamous Gundam Musashi, uh, the disaster as anime, as I call it now, because it is, at, last year I worked with um, Ann Lee from Chic Pexel. She translated an interview, an tell-all interview that was done in a magazine right after the show aired, finished airing in Japan, and they explain a lot of just what went wrong with that show. And it's, a, it's, it's weird. It's like for how infamous it is, it's not something easily available. But it's, if you ever come across it, it is glorious and how amazingly terrible and crappy it is. Did that ever get released here in the States? No. So Musashi isn't funny. The show became so infamously bad in Japan that they want to take advantage of it right away. So after like a first like eight episodes came out, they released those episodes as they aired on TV on DVD in Japan. And that wound up being the only release of the show on DVD, just those eight episodes. They were going to do a complete collection with fixed animation and everything and it never came out. And then like a year or two later, Kaze France licensed the entire show and put it all out on DVD. So the only complete DVD release is over. And, uh, and, and you said Kaze France, so it's only in French? It's French, Italian, okay. Dutch, and I think one other language, but not English. I just found out Italian, uh, because I my family is from Sicily, and my grandparents don't speak mm -hmm. any English. So I found out that Italy just has been getting a lot of giant robot series on blu-ray like zambot 3 has a really nice blu-ray release over there um so europe I'm, loves their giant oh yeah and i and i love giant robots like i just uh i just imported this i don't know if you can see that panzer world galliot um oh uh, okay uh, so i'm gonna start importing some italian stuff because i don't understand japanese uh but i do understand okay. italian but it's just I, it's just it's it's kind of funny to see what regions of the world like what and it's just like I remember I remember going to Sicily as a kid and seeing Gundam over there. So it's just like so like when people make fun of me for loving Gundam so much, I'm like, it's in my blood. It's a part of my it's part of my DNA. Yeah. Yeah, I completely understand that. So what's your so when you go into writing about a series, uh, how like what is the process? Because you obviously put in a lot of research, a ton of research. So 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 do you go and read interviews? Do you go and rewatch the thing and then or do you have like notes and then you piece it together like what's the process uh i'm an idiot so i don't write notes i just do the review as i watch it more or less um really <laughs> it's weird but um i do some research yeah i look up wherever i can uh to be honest wikipedia japan is actually much more reliable than you would get in wikipedia in english because i think they don't care as much about trolling and you know putting up lies if they feel like it they probably do but usually they have the links to prove it okay yeah, I'll look up the stuff. I'll look up whatever information I can. Even if it's just basic information, like if it's based on a manga, when did it run? Who made it? Where did it? What magazine? You know, so and so. Oh, awesome. And, so, um, so. Yeah. So, uh, so after you do the research, because uh, you're so like you're like the way you write is just it's really good. Um, so how Thank you. how long does it usually take to make to write a rev a a review for something? So it really just comes down to how long it takes for me to watch it. I mean, if it was like a movie or like a short little OVA, like a 45 half minute, th half hour thing, 
if I'm in the mood, I could probably, I used to be able to get stuff done in one day. Like I would watch it and write about it and be done. And that was back in the early days when I had very basic uh, right, reviews. If you go back to the old stuff from like the from like 2010, 2011, 2012, they're relatively basic. They didn't get more complex until after then. But essentially, it's if it's like a TV series, as I'm watching it, I'll type, you know, I'll type into uh, Blogger, which is what I use Blogspot, you know, how I'm feeling, or I just try to remember in my mind, like, okay, there's this theme I want to talk about. There's these characters I want to bring up. So it's essentially as I'm watching it, I'm going to review it. And by the time I usually when I finish the show, which watching a show, I'll have the review out within either that same day, not as much anymore, but within the next couple of days. So, so it, it's as long as it takes for me to watch it, really. <laughs> so why did you choose to focus on older anime? Uh, kind of hard, harder to find titles, but like, because there's a lot of like now we're just bomb, we're just bombarded with anime, constant, constant well, stuff. But what about to you makes older anime special? Yeah, so part of this is almost personal. So when I was growing up, um, especially in elementary school, up through high school, but not as much in high school, I was a bit of an ostracized kid. I was like the weird kid. I didn't dress in like the usual stuff where it's like all labels and I dressed in like solid colors or stripes. And I was just weird. You know, probably in my neighborhood, that's the most you can get for being called weird. I was you know, so weird. Kind of, lucky. So that kind of made me just want to relate more to like the underdog to stuff that no one cares about so if something becomes super popular and like oh you gotta see this i'm like nah <laughs> if i want to i will but otherwise i just want to focus on whatever i want to watch then at this point and that kind of just stretched also when it came to anime so like uh for a good example of a show that i love that you know not too many people hear of my two friends who i met you know because of anime mostly they were at the time really into the Hajime no Ippo anime, Fighting Spirit as Jenny. Oh man, said. check this out. I got something to show you. Uh oh. I know, I know bootlegs are kind of taboo, but uh, I got. I, I had plenty, so the no, I don't. Full I'm not Hajime no Ippo anime on Blu ray. So I, I, I love this show. They're, uh, no, that show, so, the show. The, uh, the guy who does these, he sends them to me for free, but the way he does it is he'll buy the Blu-rays from Japan and then he'll like source the video and then he puts the English subtitles on top of it. So Okay, so you got me. So, I mean, they're they're as nice of a bootleg as humanly possible. But, sorry, okay, I, just, I just... No one ever talks about Hajime no Ippo, so I got a little <laughs> excited to finally be like, I love Hajime. That, that's, why, that's why it bombed for Jenny on. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so they were really into Ippo, and I liked Ippo too, but I was like, okay, so I want to watch a boxing anime. But I was like, I'm not sure. Ippo's super long. And I, I actually have never seen their full original series. I think I got like the first 50 some episodes, and that was like 10 years ago when I last watched it. I have the DVDs. I'll get to it one day. <laughs> so I'm looking, and I see this other series, and it's called Ring Ni Kakero. And it's based off of a manga by Masami Kuramada, who this was actually his first big hit, and later he became more well known for Saint Seiya. So I was like, okay, I want to watch a different type of boxing anime. Again, my whole, I guess you could say I'm a true hipster in that sense. <laughs> I don't want to do what everyone else does. So I, I watched the show, and I loved it, and I still love it to this day. And, yeah, so th that's kind of how almost my mind works. It's it's weird and busted, but I like it. I mean, I, uh, I think the same way. I grew up also very weird. Uh, my parents own a pizza place, so I grew up around teenagers, and they would just throw their influences on me. And I got into like metal music super young, so like going into junior high, we're all black. I painted my nails black. I was a goth kid. I listened to nothing but like old black metal and death metal, and uh, so I was always weird too. And then anime seems, yeah, yeah, yeah. So anime was always like the first anime I saw was because these employees were just handing me, you know, like VHS copies of like stuff that they like ripped off of their, you know, television or old DVDs. Um, so like, that's why I like asking that question. Hey, well, how did you get into anime? Cause everyone I've talked to has had a pretty cool version of that. Yeah. No two stories are going to be the same. No, I mean, well, a lot of people within my age group, cause I'm 27. Okay. Uh, it's usually just, I saw Dragon Ball on Cartoon Network. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's usually just Dragon Ball, uh, but I think Justin and Robert were the two and Zach were also the th those three. And then you 
um, have always have you guys have had a pretty unique way of getting into this. And yeah. Then, uh, yeah. Uh, do you watch? So I see golden. I see golden com. I see golden com away in the <laughs> background right there. Do you? Uh, which I have it. I don't know if you can see. It's right above. It's above the Streamyard banner here. Uh, okay. Do you, do you keep up with any th- current anime? Uh, I mean, the thing with me is I'm inherently lazy, which is weird considering what I do, how I do my writings and stuff. So I occasionally do try. I think the last show I actually kind of kept up. So I tried keeping up with Jojo part four when it aired in the end, I held off, but I, but I did finish it. So I now I have to watch part five. So I'm well behind on that. Uh, I was trying to keep up with, Tiger Mask Double when that was airing, and I only got about 18 episodes in. It's a great show, but again, I have to finish it one day. I tried doing it with Dororo, and again, I, I, if I do, I almost never finish it nowadays. That's pretty much how I am, or I wait till it's you know just bingeable. Like I wait till there's like five or six episodes of just binge. The only thing I, I usually do that much at once, but yeah, I get it. I uh, I'm trying to like right now. Vinland Sagas, Vinland Saga, Blade of the Immortal, and then Psycho Pass season three are the three that I'm like really happy about uh but the only thing i keep up with weekly is common writer um just every okay. every year when, like when common writer comes out i'm a huge common writer fan so every time that comes out that's the only thing i uh, keep up with but what do you think i don't know because i've i've been trying to find a way to say this in the words uh anime of the past seems a little bit more special when it comes to like the actual content. And then nowadays it seems not as special. And it's, I think it's because here in the States, we're just getting so much thrown at us. Like every season, there's hundreds of new shows coming out. Um, yeah. So a, a big thing about that is just because of the fact that we're getting almost all of it, we get like 97, 99% of every new show that comes out. The only stuff we don't get are like your Doraemon's with that's not even, but say your Sazai Sans, your Monaco Chan's, pretty cure for some reason no one you know no one's it's always not laying that stream or something you know like the kids shows and the family shows like that we the mainstream stuff we don't get those but essentially if it's late night we're getting it and because of that that just yeah everyone wants to stay what's with what's current you know and i i don't fault that or anything but that's just the way fandom kind of works they have to stay with what's current back you know up until before crunchyroll you know went legit and started simulcasting and then that made everyone else want to simulcast essentially we were just being curated stuff and you know there was a fan sub scene but that wasn't that was still a niche within the niche for a lot of people they were just going to go with what's being released in america and that was only so much of it and that's it that's really just what it comes down to do you think also uh, just too much anime being made there's too much anime being made for the past decade way too much do you think uh do you think we're gonna hit like a bubble because like there's too many streaming platforms in general but then when you think about anime specific streaming platforms we got i mean crunchyroll high dive funimation netflix amazon like that's five right there just for anime if you want to keep up with everything coming out each season you have to have five subs yeah, I mean, everyone. The weird thing is, everyone's been saying bubble, 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 and I don't doubt it. There, there will, there's something's gotta burst. It's just, it's. I've been hearing bubble for almost this entire decade. Well, maybe not the entire decade, but at least since like the early to mid of this decade, there's always been talk of, oh, the bubble's gonna burst. The bubble's gonna burst. Somehow it still hasn't yet, which is weird. Yeah. It, I think like, it's partially because like, when you get Netflix, that's not aiming for the anime fan, which is why people get complaints that they're not airing stuff weekly like they actually do in Japan for some shows. My 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 problem with Netflix is that like they don't put out physical versions of the stuff that they license. Like Devilman Crybaby never got a US Blu-ray real uh, Blu-ray release, but you can import yeah. it from Japan and it has the English subtitles on it. So it's just like like that's the thing I don't like about Netflix is that the stuff that they do license and when they they license a lot of like mediocre stuff, uh, but when something is good and and it and it hits just right, it's really good, and it makes me sad because I can't. I, I'm a huge fan of physical media. You know, I got like I got a like a crazy collection. Yeah, yeah, I got you know. So I don't like digital only stuff. And there's some mm-hmm. series that are just lost. I think um, uh, there's a show called Rainbow, I believe that was an old anime. Not, that was not, a good- license yeah 
Yeah, and then that never got licensed. That was on Funimation and never got put out on DVD. When I say it never got licensed, I mean it never came out yeah. physically. Uh, on on Angomois, which was about the Mongolian. Uh, um, yeah, yeah, that never. That was a great show, I thought, and it never. Got a, one, I huh? I think that was Amazon that had that one. Uh, I I think I saw it on Crunchyroll. I could, it might be confusing with Altair. I think that was at Amazon. <laughs> But like these shows are just like I think we're good or just never get like I'm surprised we're getting Gridman honestly. It took them a while to like officially announce that. Yeah, that that's a Funimation Crunchyroll thing because I think both their logos are on the packaging. But okay. um, that's always been the thing that that's pretty much been the thing ever since simulcasting became regular in like around 2010, 2011. You know, Rainbow was a 2011 show. That was a uh, really 2011 good was show pretty much a. Yeah, I've, that's what I've heard, and yeah, again, that was something I wanted to watch, and I missed it. And, that, <laughs> and now it's but, gone. Um, you, you, you. That's not available to stream. You can't. There are fan subs, but I'm not. You know, anyone can look for those on their own. I'm not going to be telling. Yeah. People. <laughs> yeah. yeah so that's always been just a problem. I mean, even if you want to go with another 2011 series, no one would shove about to Tommy Galaxy. They be keep yeah. selling fun. Hey, it's Atomic Galaxy. Where's the Atomic Galaxy? Where's the Atomic Galaxy? And finally, Funimation just put it out this year like on what? Blu-ray. Eight, eight years later, finally, roughly. Mm -hmm. That's and yeah. it's only because of stuff like uh, Delman Cry Baby and all the other stuff that made Masaki Yuasa more of a name now. Yeah, it's just, it's so weird uh, how like even my dad was like, "Yo, what's this Devil Man?" And my dad doesn't like anime. Like he, he even the like marketing behind that show on Netflix was just insane. Like, and was, just the visuals, it just makes you go like, "What the hell is this? This I have to see this." I uh, I was at the gym watching it, and uh, during the rave scene, I was like covering up my phone. I was like, I, <laughs> "I I can't be seen here doing cardio while people are walking around while this is happening on screen because it's uh, great rave music you got going there." <laughs> oh my God, <laughs> but uh, man, that show was really good though. I think, like, I, I can't think of, like, there was a lot of hype behind that, and definitely the talk around it died down because I think, again, we're in that age where things are just coming at us at such a pace. Mm -hmm. uh, but I can't think of another show in the last 10 years that I have seen more than once and have thought about, like, regularly. So no, yeah, what, are, what are some of your favorite on those best years? years? It's definitely going to be, like... If not number one, it's gonna be like top three for like multiple anime of the decade lists. Yep. I've only seen like the first two, but it, it, it looks amazing. It, it, does, it, look, it, it like, does look amazing. Awesome style, unique, and that's what makes it. And going to guys, original manga is amazing. And that's it's, it's just a perfect combination. I got it right. Yep, right there. Yep, those two. Um, uh, it's about some. I think right past the Gundam on my uh, <laughs> on my right. So, what are some of your favorite shows of the last? 10 years that like when this decade is over next is in it's it's over in what two months or a month next month yeah yeah let's say two months let's just say two so months. about two months the decade's over uh i'm 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 getting a video ready to you know i'm thinking about doing a video uh of the, my favorite anime of the last 10 years like a top 10 and uh i can only get like four written down but what are some of your favorites See, then that, that that's where I'm bad because I haven't I'm so bad at keeping up and that it's just especially this past decade there's like literally thousands over this whole entire decade it's like almost impossible to think of like just once off the top of your head um that's uh, great like stuff that I, I saw that Jojo yeah any part <laughs> yeah just the fact that Jojo came out strong in this last decade makes me really mm -hmm. happy. no that, that made me so happy because like I was saying before with Jojo like I played the games I, I love the game. And then I started reading a little bit of the manga with the scanlations, and then Vez decided to give the part three a try and I, as it came out and it yeah. bombed. And so when it, and I, and I got the OVAs when they came out. Oh, well, I got, eventually got the OVAs. Now there's now like the set, the second half OVA from the nineties. That's like super expensive now. And then once the TV anime, and then there was the, I'm sorry, then there was the Phantom Blood movie, which I was excited for, and then apparently was super terrible and is never has never been released ever since its home its theatrical release, even in Japan, it was that bad. And then yeah, when the TV series came out, I'm like, oh, I, I don't care, I just want to see it. And then I, I can say this: 
with JoJo. It wasn't simulcasted. It was like probably the last big name that never got simulcasted. But I went to Anime Boston in 20... I'm not sure if it's 12 or 13. It might have been 13. And me and my friends, we saw a JoJo presence. And we're like, this it, 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 it finally hit with a crowd. And then it went on Crunchyroll and it just exploded. I, uh, when I, like my non-anime friends, like friends who don't like anime, there was two shows this last decade that got them talking about it. It was Attack on Titan. I think that's going to be yeah. on a lot of, on a lot of people's lists. And then Jojo, yeah. just the, just the fever among Jojos that are just, and it's such a weird show too. Like it's such a bizarre mm-hmm. show. The, the, like my friends who don't watch anime, who love it. It's just so weird that they even like it. Cause it's just, it's a weird ass show. It's a weird ass manga. It's just, that is just a weird ass yeah. property. It's just nuts. Uh, for me, yeah, I really that, like. That's the appeal. Yeah, and for me, I really liked Iron Blooded Orphans. I thought that was pretty solid. That one I haven't seen, but my friends saw and they liked it. I I uh, I mean I, um, I don't know why I, I I like this wasn't planned. I just had the box set for season two just next to me. <laughs> I think another one that'll probably go down on like the best of the decade is definitely gonna be the Hunter Hunter reboot. Yeah, yeah, twenty uh, yeah that came out what twenty eleven. Twenty eleven, it debuted. Yeah. For, like for, I, I saw pieces of that, and I saw the first movie, but I liked Hunter x Hunter from the original '90s series. Um, but yeah, it's easy to see why Hunter x Hunter is so beloved. It like for, as much as people complain about Togashi taking forever to get new chapters out, he tells amazing stories. For a weekly shonen series, I can't think of another one besides Demon Slayer that was just so beautifully animated week mm-hmm. after week after week, and it's like a hundred some episodes. It was just. Like it's just Hunter Hunter twenty eleven is like a hundred and something episodes, right? Oh Hunter Hunter, I thought you read the Demon Slayer. I'm like, what? Oh, no. yeah. Hunter, I mean, I... like a hundred and seven or something. And uh, the last box set's actually even come out. I think in like a month or two. And then Demon Slayer was a show that I read the manga, didn't like, uh, and then the anime just because I think the anime is so beautifully animated made me a fan. But uh, but to talk about, I always find an excuse to talk about discotech when I'm uh, doing a show because it's my favorite, <laughs> it's my favorite company, but uh, I've actually canceled some of my right. subs to, you know, to a couple, like I've canceled Funimation. I canceled high dive uh, because companies like discotech are taking up so much of my watch time. Like this, mm-hmm. is, like I, as a fan of anime and like, especially like obscure stuff and a fan of tokusatsu, this has been an incredible handful of years. Uh, and discotech oh, is yeah. definitely behind most of that. Like, like this, like what? In like October, even though it's supposed to come out at the end of November, we got five, no, seven Blu-rays from Discotech this month, technically. Like just crazy, yeah. amount of, crazy amount of content to like sit down and watch. And it's usually hits. They don't, like very rarely do I dislike something. Yeah, I'm, you know, it's weird. Like, uh, and you've it brought up when you talked to Justin and Logan, like Mr. Discotech Selby, but Mr. Discotech is, I think, what everyone just wants him to refer to. <laughs> he just, that's what they call him at the panels. That's what Mike Tool calls him at the panels. So the main thing is you have to wonder what kinds of deals he's making because, uh, like Justin explained to you, I remember when he did that interview with you, like, there are literally sometimes you can get, you know, shows that they don't even sell a thousand units. And so he's got to be getting amazing deals just to break even. Yeah. That kind of blew and, my mind when he said that I was like, Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. So the thing is a lot of it is at this point, they're just getting stuff that has that cult following. And I think you said you could cancel high dive. I'm not going to judge anything, but I think they've hit like an interesting high dive uh, yeah, lately. Style. They've been, they've been announcing some older stuff and I'm like, Fuck, I'm gonna have to- that is like really cool. That's like an almost continuation of uh, the old deal sent I had with them, where we got like the Gatchaman re release, old cash on, and um, like the Time Book on OVAs and some other stuff. So I'm really interested in seeing what they do from the old Tatsunoko stuff. Uh, you know, Gold Light, and I saw the first episode of that uh, when they licensed ago. that, I was like, please, yes, it's, it's on there now, please. It's on- Fuck, all right, I'm gonna resub the high dive. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna cancel HBO or something. I can't, like, yeah, exactly. man, high dive. And the next, 
um, Yoroshiku Mechadoc, which is a s- series about like tuning up old uh, jalopies to make them like street raceable. That's so awesome. Yeah, high dive. Based on, like- based on an old school jump manga. And uh, they just announced a couple days ago uh, Judo Boy, Kuranai Sanshiro, which, depending on how you define these things, is technically the first anime ever based on a jump manga because it did run in jump, even though it didn't debut in jump. See, and then even on Twitter, the way you write is very like poignant and very just thoughtful. And like whenever you're talking about these old series, uh, you sometimes go on like a little bit of a tangent where it's like a couple, you know, tweet threads. And uh, I enjoy reading every single one. And man, without because you like I I follow too many people on Twitter. I probably need to trim that down. But uh, usually when you tweet something, um, I see it and it's usually news. Like you were tweeting high dive news for a while. And I was like, fuck. I'm gonna have to get right back in the watching high dive stuff again. Yeah, because the Tatsunoko shows like that that got my interest. Like, wow. So hopefully that means we're gonna get physical stuff from that. What in each of like the news reports high dive makes, they they are crediting Sentai and made in Japan. So I would I would guess the physical is gonna happen from that. Isn't made in Japan just a like a like a off brand of Sentai? So this is all under, like, if you ask them, they'll be like, no, we're completely different companies. They're all under the Section 23 umbrella. And the best way to describe it is uh, Senate Filmworks is run by John Ledford, who was the old head of ADV Films. And Made in Japan is run by Matt Greenfield, who was the co-founder of ADV Films. Because they're both listed respectively as executive producers on each of those releases. Okay. Okay. So hopefully, man, hopefully, I do you think there's any chance, because, you know, the the rough contract from what i understand from having people on is seven years on Mm -hmm. the natural normal contract do you think we're going to get those sunrise shows that never got released by sentai it's it's coming up on seven years yeah um never say never but who the hell knows i mean the fact that we have ideon the bungle and uh or a, and or about or done by on Blu-ray blows my mind still. Yeah, those are sure those are completely separate deals from that old uh, multi-title deal, so those wouldn't count on them, especially since uh, it's a bungle and Ideon are technically not Sentai. So do you want to take a break about talking about manga? What I mean, not manga, anime. Uh, what are some of your other hobbies? Like, what else are you into besides? You're also in the retro games. I'm into games in general, but uh, yeah, I mean, retro games, I mean, I've I've been, my first system, you know, was the Atari 2600, and that was back in like 1990 or something, because that's just my fan, my parents, I don't know when they got it, probably for my, my older brother, so I played Atari 2600, and we didn't have NES or Master System, so in 91, uh, when we got the Genesis with Sonic that packed in. So we went from 2600 to 16 bit. It was just from then on, it's just, you know, I've been in, uh, I don't want to say addicted, but I've been stuck with gaming ever since. Yeah. Um, I grew up with a Super Nintendo and then uh, growing up before the restaurant became, you know, popular, we were poor. So I only had a Super Nintendo for up until the 360 came out. And uh, then I got one for Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but then you know the PS2 going back and getting a PS2. Um, but my favorite genres are either JRPGs or uh, bullet hells. Like those two, I keep, mm-hmm. I keep playing a lot. But lately, I've been playing a lot of uh, Call of Duty, the new one. It seems like every year I go through like a like a phase where for about a month I'll play Call of Duty nonstop, and then I'm good till next year. And just, but yeah, right now I've been playing Dragon Quest XI, uh, which is phenomenal. I heard that's amazing. It is amazing. And uh, I bought it on PS4. Didn't get to play it because around the same time, you know, I, I be I, my, well, my wife gave birth to our daughter. Uh, thank you. And uh, she's about to turn two, uh, which is, which is, which is nuts. Uh, she, uh, I, I, I was telling this on the another podcast. I, I did a bad dad moment where I was watching the rebuild films and I didn't, and she was just in the room. And uh, then at the end of rebuild two, I was like, I need to not watch <laughs> this anime around my kid. You got you got already, your wife at that point. She's already weird. <laughs> she's already really weird. So, but in a good way. She's a she is she is weird in a good way. Huh? She's been indoctrinated. She's, yeah, she uh she loves uh she watched a she she watched Akira with me, and the whole time she was just sitting there, 
and just like just eyes locked on the screen and i was like eh, don't tell your mom that we're watching akira together because that would probably be bad but uh if any of you guys in the audience if the movie has never been re-released because then that would be really bad for your daughter <laughs> So if uh, if anyone in the comments has any questions for George, um, anything at all, we will uh, as as we're talking, we'll throw them up on screen. Um, I told George we'd take about forty five minutes to an hour. I don't want to take too much of his time up. Uh, I, I, I got time, you know. I got, time? I got more. Yeah, I got time. Whatever time you need. Okay, awesome. Well, I got about another. I got about another 30, 45 minutes, depending on. Um, when I get a text, uh, we, uh, so I, I we, we were supposed to do this earlier. We were supposed to do this at two o'clock. Mm -hmm. Uh, but our pop cooler broke at, at our, uh, at our restaurant and they were supposed to bring it yesterday at eight 30 in the morning. And then they were supposed to bring it again today. And so I was busy doing that. And then tonight we have to go in a little bit. I have to go with a couple of employees and we're going to, uh, put the whole, the, like the whole place back together. Cause we had to move so much equipment to get this huge cooler in and into the restaurant. Right. Um, ooh, we, we, we got a question from Rio. What's George's favorite Masami Kura, Kuramata series? Uh, my the, my favorite one of that is going to be Ring Kaketo 1, the boxing series that I mentioned earlier. Uh, I do love Saint Seiya. I'm happy that it's on Netflix with a good translation and a brand new is really good. But um, the thing is, I, I got into Kuramata the wrong way. So one of my earliest shows when I started really becoming an anime fan, while I'm looking at both fan subs, was Beat X, which is his mecha fix uh, focused series during the 90s. Because I remember seeing Deke's Knights of the Zodiac when it was on Cartoon Network. I remember seeing the ads. I'm like, this doesn't look cool. So I was like, you know, I'm not going to watch that. And so I would give Beat X. I'm like, I can't, you know, judge this guy for just one work, and I haven't even seen it. And I like Beat X. And then I, I gave R and K a try. I'm like, this is really cool too. And then I finally went with Saint Seiya, but I went with the manga. And then uh, last year, I finally bought all the DVDs that ADV put out for Deke's Knights of the Zodiac, and I tortured myself for about a good solid week. And I, I, no, no one should ever watch that version. No one. No one. No one. It, it, it's it's second only to Four Kids One Piece. Ooh, that's yes. that's bad. There's literally a scene in Seiya where uh, Dragon Shudu, one of the characters, has to repair him and Shudu's cloths, their armors. And in order to do that, you have to bleed a lot on them. So there's literally a scene where you have Shudu slit his wrist, doing this, bleeding all over the cloths, and they had to color it neon green and call it Mystic Energy. Huh. <laughs> and, they, and this is after, the, it originally aired at 7 p.m. on the old SVES block, not Toonami. And then after like four episodes, they moved it over to like midnight. So I can only imagine how people would have reacted if the mystic energy bleeding on the cloths thing was done on like prime time. And then we got we we have another question here. What from Mr. Butterbritches? What are George's thoughts on Toei animation? I know people want to rag on Toei, you know, and I and I get it. You know, the, the big thing with Toei is that they are. A mainstream company they're one of the closest things you can get to a mainstream anime studio and so they're going to go a lot of the mainstream stuff they're not always going to get deliver the uh animation the sakuga that people really like to see though they do deliver sometimes you know there are shows where they that's what they do do no pun intended no no joke there yeah <laughs> but you know when you like stuff like when you get into like you know one piece you know they have to put that out weekly and they're not going to put that on hiatus they're not going to they're going to have to produce it as they produce it. So it's not always going to look the best. But the, no matter what you think of Toei, you have to respect them for being like one of the earliest ones. Like they are the ones that brought animation to like a proper full color theatrical film format with Hakuja Den, Panda and the White Serpent. They have this history and I think they at least er have earned respect. You don't have to like what they do with like their biggest names, but you do have to acknowledge that, yes, you have to acknowledge the spot that they are the main name in anime. They're one of the biggest ones. So they're not always going to do what you want to do. But when they do what you want to do, they're going to make it really well. And then, uh, oh, Mr. Buddy Richard says OG Dragon Ball. I think he's referring to. And then uh, Ryu says BTX is so good. 
Speed X is a really fun series. And um, that is actually, uh, within the past year or so, uh, Anime Midstream actually put the entire anime out on DVD. You can buy it on right, at Right Stuff and Amazon right now. And it is well worth it. It has a brand new dub by Sound Cadence in Texas. There's people that did Komodo oh, Friends yep, and yep. Hell recently. And it's an outstanding dub. Like it, whereas like Komodo Friends and City Hunter and Hells mostly have like their younger talent. They managed to get a lot of like well-known, respected, and seasoned voice actors for BX. And it really makes the show sound outstanding. And you said BTX has a release on Amazon? It's uh, physical only. The, the, the anime stream, you know, doesn't think it'll do well enough for streaming, so they're only doing physical. But yeah, you can buy the two box sets for both seasons on Right Stuff and Amazon. Well, it looks like I'm doing that after this uh, after this podcast is over. It's well worth it. It's a great series. Uh, you were talking about how the manga was going out of print a couple weeks ago because uh, uh, they had some kind of sale going on, and uh, you were like, "Pick this up," even though some of the volumes are stupidly out of print yeah so it's so it's btx and then btx neo are the two yeah btx and btx neo yep well this is going on my wish list here uh, it diverges from where the anime goes because the anime wasn't done yet but it has an outstanding ending of its own so i want to talk to you about manga for a little bit because we've been talking exclusively sure. about anime um do you so with manga do you besides golden conway because i can that's the only one i can make out do you keep up <laughs> with any of the newer series? So manga, I actually have made more of an effort to try to keep up with. So Golden Kamui, yeah, whenever there's a new volume of that, I, I'm getting that. It's great. That is a, such a good that show. Is, I mean, such a good manga, sorry. This, I saw some of the show, too. The show is great, too. But yeah, yeah Golden Kamui, weird series. it's almost like JoJo, where it could be like completely comical and just insane, and then go super serious and still just be, and then they have these moments just weird, and you're like, how the hell does he come up with this stuff? Yeah, it's like a cooking manga. It's a comedy gag manga. It's sometimes a little too brutal in the action. It's just like it's everything you would want from a good seinen just rolled into one ball. Uh, I think I'm missing. Yeah, I'm missing volume twelve. The twelve just came out. I think I'm. That's the oh, one I'm, gonna forget, I'm gonna forget that. <laughs> so, uh, uh, what else are you uh, checking out this year, manga wise? So. The, uh, I got the Devil Man's. I got all of Seven Seas Devil Man stuff as it came yeah, out. Yeah, he Hades, and the OG. Yep, and then of course the OG. Uh, yeah, it's like I think so. Lined up, yeah. So uh, the stuff that's that is still coming out. Um, what well, put about to Seven Seas? They are putting out Saint Seiya, Saint a spinoff series that's focused on like a uh, small group of female warriors that are meant to be like handmaidens to Athena. It has a bit of a slow start. Like the first five volumes feels like it's kind of just one big prologue because they can't really interfere with the main story yet. But now it's getting into the main story and it's really, really fun. And it has a, it maintains the feel of a Saint Seiya series. Yeah, Seven Seas, uh, I didn't have any of their stuff besides Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer and Girl from the Other Side. Until this year, hey, man, the past couple of years that I really that I had a few of their old stuff, like went back when they debuted and were doing OEM stuff, original English language stuff. But now they've got a lot more stuff, and I'm willing to give them more tries. Like they just picked up the Dodo manga that Satoshi Shiki is doing. Yeah, I'm, I'm oh, super, wow. super excited about that too. Uh, another one that they put out uh, was Get a Robo D Evolution, done by the same duo behind yeah. Minecraft of Iron so and Ultra. That is a fun series, and it's the Get ending, a the ending was really. If you're a fan of the original manga, the ending, have you read the, have like you hurried up and read scans no. of that? No, no, I'm Ooh. I'm reading. I, I don't do scanlations uh really much anymore unless it's I, like something I have to I'm gonna review and it's only available there and it's even that's rare. I I again this is that that like that that blurred line of is it okay to read scans, but I only read scans of series I know I'm gonna buy each volume of and get a robo is a series I'm gonna by and I love Get a Robo, so I'm reading it, and the releases have been so slow. And Ryu just said the ending of the evolution blew my mind. Yeah, there's oh, read the original and then read the new one. You're gonna be like, I'm I'm expecting uh, insanity because that is Get a Robo ever since the '90s. Um, the uh, Get a Robo Armageddon 
New Getter Robo, even to a small extent, Shin Getter versus Neo Getter. Those anime all have like insanity. That's just Ken Ishikawa in a, in a nutshell. I got uh, I got every Getter Robo Blu-ray, every Getter Robo Blu-ray, and then I got new Getter Robo on DVD. I, I I got the I got the box that came with the freaking bandana that. Uh, yep. that that uh, that, uh, that Genie came out, and thank God it wasn't used because I would feel a little weird putting on a used <laughs> bandana. But uh, yeah, I'm a, I Seven Seas that, and then uh, they're putting out the Captain Harlock reboot. Mm, I've been reading that. Yes, uh, I'm is that good? And I'm just gonna reread the entire thing because there's just so it's 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 weird. It's this is um. It's pretty much like retelling Carlock from what I can tell, but it's like trying to create like an all-star version where all of the Ma- Malachi verse is in canon. So it makes references to Galaxy Express. There was a like a couple shots of Gun Frontier, which is the Wild West manga that Harlock okay. came from. I can, there, get, um, I can totally get behind that. I love the. I love, I love it, 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 it's, it's really fun. It's a really fun series. It's a really fast read. It feels like an old school series, which tend to have much faster storytelling. God damn it, George! I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm on right stuff right now. This isn't good. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm gonna ruin you one more time with one that I don't think anyone talks about, and that is this series right here, uh, Precarious Woman Executive, Miss Black General. What is that? I've never this even heard of that. Yeah, so this is a series that like Seven Seas put out. I don't. No one talks about. So this is essentially it's a bit of a gag series about a woman who decides to join an evil organization because she's in love with Brave Man, this uh, mixture of like Superman and Batman who s- protects the city. And since he, she realizes that, oh, he doesn't need super sidekicks, you know, he's so powerful. If I want to be near him all the time, I got to be the villain that's always against him. And it's just, it's, it's really much like a gag series where the villains are s- mostly incompetent and it's, they're not really. It's 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 kind of almost hard to explain. If there's a best example I could think of is there's a uh, a manga and anime from the 2000s never came out in America, but it's called um, Astro Fighter Sun Red, and that series pretty much the main character who's meant to look like a Red Ranger from uh, Super Sentai, he's pretty much a jackass, and all the villains are super nice, and the, the comedy is just the villains are tr- want to be villainous, but they're always too polite, and the Hero has to be heroic, but he's a jackass to everyone, including the villains. And this is kind of like the same kind of humor where it's like the no neither like the heroes can be heroic, but the villains tend to come off more incompetent and just more comical. And it's usually every chapter is its own little thing. But the the fourth volume that came out a few months back, they pretty much caught up. So you know you're not you don't have a lot to catch up on. The fourth volume actually had like one overarching story, and it actually was told pretty well. And actually. Uh, made you see some of the characters in new light. It shows that like the villains can be heroic if they really have to be, just because there's always someone even more villainous above them. R- R- Ryu says Sunred is one of the most hilarious things I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, Sunred and, is awesome. Uh, just, unfortunately, it's never been released officially in English. And he also said Ken Ishikawa is one of the most underrated manga authors, always overshadowed by his sensei Gomen guy. Yeah. I can agree with that. It's that partially because Ishikawa passed away kind of young. He passed away like about 15 years ago. Oh, wow. And then, uh, sorry, Mr. Butterbridges, I didn't see your question until just now. Sometimes when you're using StreamYard, the, the, like, like the comments shut down. Like there's like a glitch in it. Uh, but what do you guys think of Full Metal Alchemist? Uh, I've only actually read a little of the manga. I have the entire series, but uh, it's in the closet because I have that giant like chest yeah, that opens up. The box set. Uh, yeah. I've only seen the 2003 series and the movie. I never saw. I only saw like one episode of Brotherhood, so I can't judge Brotherhood. But Full Metal Alchemist is, is outstanding. You know, that's essentially the series that solidified me one anime fan. So I, I have only I'll, seen Brotherhood. Story, you know, can't recommend it enough. Yeah, it's. I have, it, to, I have to give it for me. I have to give it a rewatch one day. <laughs> it is fantastic. Uh, a manga series I think you should check out: Ultraman. I read the first volume of that. That's just one of those cases. Where it's like, oh man, that's like ten plus. I'll see when I can get that. Yeah, I. I mean, luckily, I. I. I started reading it as it was coming out, almost, and then. Uh, but I just, I love those two. I. I can't think of their names off the top of my head, which I is pretty uh, shitty of me. But uh, they're just line uh, line barrels of iron, uh, mm-hmm. which I think is great. 
uh, Get a Robo Devolution, and then Ultraman. And then they have another series out in Japan that just started uh, called Dragon's Heart or something. Uh, I think I've heard about that it, announced about a bunch about it. It looks like a common writer thing, um, but I think they're fantastic. Um, I'm trying to think of like ongoing stuff. Most of the stuff I have is like like I have a whole shelf just dedicated to Dark Horse right there, and it's like, <laughs> Gantz, Lone Wolf and Cub, Blade of the Immortal, Helsing, just so much. Uh, I'm trying to think of like oh, um, uh, Witch Hat, Witch Hat, Atel- uh, Witch Hat Atelier. Should, I, I heard of that. I don't know that one, should, though. You should check that out. Uh, Mr. Butterbridges says, what exactly is Cutie Honey? I've looked into it briefly. Um, it's, so, Cutie Honey, I'll explain really fast. Uh, Cutie yeah, Honey yeah. is pretty much what happens when Go and a Guy does a series for girls, but then it was switched over to being a series for guys. And he pretty much, uh, so that's why it's, it's, a, it's an innovator of the magical girl genre, but it's also very perverted because it was aimed at guys eventually. Uh, it and yeah, that's like the best way to think about it. It's a transforming girl, transforming into these different forms, and it's almost always super etchy, and, and you're gonna see boobs and have fun with it. It's, 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 Cutie Honey knows what it is. It's dirty, but it's fun dirty. Is it also credited for being the first spinning transformation sequence in a Magical Girl series? Uh, possibly. I mean, the only things before that really were stuff like Girl Sally and and they don't do transformations i believe so i i think i think that was like cutie honey's big claim to fame i i, I know mazinger was the first giant robot to have somebody pilot it from within yes so uh go is just i think go is i mean this is a controversial statement and i'm sure i'll get shit for this but everyone thinks or everyone claims osama tezuka to be the most important person in manga and anime i think actually it's go i like for for me personally no i, I can understand that. i mean going to guy or osama tezuka he set the ball into motion he set up a lot of these stope st- uh, the trope and standards and concepts and ideas but there was only so much he was gonna he did a lot of um, reaction to how the world was evolving so when the gekiga movement came and it was more about stories for adults that he decided okay i can do gekiga uh, Dororo was actually, he admitted he only made Dororo because Shigeru Mizuki did Gegege no Kitaro and had a lot of success. So he's like, I'm going to do a yokai story too. <laughs> um, one guy, like, his first kind of fame was Shameless School, Harenshi Gakuen, which was literally just him being told. Of Shonen Jump. I, I think the original pilots were in its predecessor, but yeah, it was in the first issue of Shonen Jump. And yeah, it was pretty much, he was just told, yeah, uh, do you know? Do whatever you want. He's like, okay, I want to do a story about you know school life and the kids just being mischievous. And they're like, oh, well, if you want to show like you know bare breasts, go ahead. And he's like, what? I I can do that. And they're like, yeah, sure. Let's 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 have we're, we're a new magazine. We gotta get attention. And they got the then, attention. Yeah, and then the PTA complained and it got so bad. <laughs> that in that I'm manga with an orgy, the PTA kill all the kids and all the students. Yeah. and all the teachers. And then, but but he, that wasn't the end of the manga. That's it's commonly believed that was how the manga ended. But it's literally just that was just what he did. And then after it died down, he went back to jump and just finished it up. But like he just revived everyone and did did a little more for like another year or two. That that's just the. It. It's just the crazy thing that everyone likes to tell that tale of going a guy in and yeah, out. And then uh, I was surprised that that wasn't even his idea. That was his editor going, just kill him off. Okay. <laughs> and speaking of going back to Osama Tezuka, how weird is it that Anime Works released Phoenix on Blu-ray this year? You know, I I, I will say like this mainly because I have to, throughout the years occasionally like, cons to John Terbella, the guy who runs Media Blasters. <laughs> I, I mean this in the nicest way possible. Andy Blasters is the uh, cockroach of this industry. It will just never die. He will refuse. He actually admitted once that um, when they had like a big financial trouble, when they lost a ton of licenses be- because of their own personal problems with some employees that left, he was actually going to be willing to quit and just let it be. But everyone kept insulting the company at the time online and on fitness boards. That just made him say, screw you. I'm going to keep going as long as I can now. And he's gonna stay. He's gonna stick to that. I can oh. say that, but about it's like he's gonna want to do it. He's gonna do it. Phoenix is a pretty solid Blu-ray release too. So 
If they yeah, put out the them is they have their own Blu-ray production stuff, so they can make their own Blu-rays. That's why they're not pressed like the DVDs are. Oh, that's awesome. So uh, I think we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, I had a blast talking to you, George. Uh, again, thank it's you so fun. much. Uh, I randomly messaged George on Twitter and was like, hey, let's do an interview. And he was completely down. And uh, guys, go show him uh, some love on Twitter. Uh, after this uh, uploads, because YouTube usually takes about 15 minutes to process, I'll be at work. But sometime tonight, I will link all your stuff in the uh, in the in the uh, section down below. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, link it to your Twitter. But uh, thank you guys for watching. Uh, this was the first live uh, episode of Flipcast. Uh, I do have one pre-recorded. It will be going up in a couple of days uh, with Zach from Uchu Shelf. Uh, we did it this morning at like 4 a.m. Like before I went to work. So um, thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for everyone in the comments. And uh, I'll catch you guys next time and go show George some love. Thank you guys. See you later.